Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Ted and Lab. I have been to a shop here called Best Buy, and that's because I've been sat in my hotel, and because the Nintendo Switch does not have Netflix or YouTube on it, it sucks because I can't plug it into my telly that's over there. And it's, in fact, I haven't even brought it with me this trip because I, you know, don't always have time to play games, but I do often have a few time I like to go to bed and watch some Netflix or whatever. And uh, it was, it's really annoying me. So I just saw this in Best Buy for $29, $27, something like that. And I thought, yeah, let's uh, give that a go. In fact, I think it was more than $27. It might have been $37. Whatever, though. It wasn't like a huge amount. And it was a toss-up between this and the Roku um, streaming stick or whatever it's called. They had various ones there. And the guy in the store convinced me because he said this is actually as fast as the faster Roku, not the fastest 4K Roku, but the one in the middle sort of thing. And he said if you've already got an Amazon account, you might as well just use it because it will hook up with all your Amazon. But I do think there's one issue with this. I think the Roku can actually turn on off your TV and do the volume. So that kind of sucks that this doesn't, but... You know, swings and roundabouts. But it does say on the box it can do ESPN, Showtime, Amazon Video, Netflix. It does do YouTube, apparently, although it doesn't have it as an app. It does a weird, you know, it loads up a um, web browser first. And notice it's it's got very shiny packaging on which the camera does not like to focus. So I'm going to keep it held back here. So it comes in a nice little box. Let's just open it, shall we? It seems to have some sort of tear there. We'll tear that off. And this isn't going to be like a crazy unboxing vid. I mean, if you want to really see an unboxing vid of something as pedestrian as a TV streaming dongle, then uh, you come to the wrong place. So there's the packet. You've got some books, it seems, here with Alexa voice remote, blah, blah, blah. As I said, it turns out I already have an Amazon Prime account too, so it's kind of neat. So you probably get your love film or whatever they're calling it, Amazon Video, for Amazon Prime Video. A couple of books, you don't really need to know about those. A dongle extension, it's HDMI. You've got a USB wire, interestingly. Ah, you do have a power supply, and of course, for me, it's a dreaded American two-pin. Again, like my Nintendo Switch, so that's uh, actually a, a kind of an annoyance um, because, of course, uh, being in the UK, that's going to sort of scupper me. Got the dongle itself, which is just like any other sort of dongle, and it says, for best performance, please use the supplied USB cable and power supply. It's so really staring at my camera here and trying to work out where it is focusing. It's focusing on that plug. It loves that plug, but does it, it doesn't love my hand. Strange. And then you've got the remote control. It's quite nice they've supplied some batteries in it. Instructions on how to ah, open the remote. So this, it says that. There we go. Pop blows like so. Get the batteries in. And interesting enough, I am in a hotel, and hotels do tend to have obscure ways of uh, signing in. So we'll see how that fares. Let's get rid of that. All of that stuff can go in the bin. So I'm gonna take the remote control, the USB cable, the HDMI extension, and the power supply, and just plug it all into the back of the TV, and let's see what it can do. <laughs> yeah, and but just before I run off again, interestingly, the autofocus on my camera is set to focus on that exact point. So just if you want to see it now in sharpness, in all of its glory, there's the remote control, and there is the stick itself. You won't be seeing much of that because it will be shoved behind your screen. <laughs> It seems to be booting up, that's what we like to see. Oh, hello. So, tap, saying tap the home button to pair. Um, okay. I think I read somewhere actually in the button manual said something about holding the plus button. Yeah, that's fine. If it doesn't do it from the tap, hold the plus button down, it'll be fine. So let's choose the language, English, UK. Scanning for networks. Now here's where it gets interesting because we're in a hotel. So let's see. Okay, connect.
Now, hotels have this extra level of security, basically, because you've got to sort of sign into the system, a bit like uh, you know signing in on a Starbucks. So I'm just going to put in my room number. And my name. Ah. Uh. That's quite responsive though. I have to say moving around it's it's always tedious to sort of do these do these interfaces, but actually it's pretty good. And we've done that. And at the bottom of the screen it says press back to uh close this page because now we've got internet. Okay. Tick tock, tick tock. And maybe I can just zoom in that a little bit more so you can see it in a bit bigger. Oh what? I thought we were done with this. Let's do it all again. Oh no, it's done. It says we're connected, see? Right, let's try again. Checking for updates. I already have an Amazon account, so I'm just going to put in my. And it has your sort of common things at the bottom for your Gmail or Yahoo, so it makes that a bit quicker. Registering your Amazon Fire TV. Successfully registered. And yes, continue as Dr. Andrew J. Armstrong. Yes, let's go. And the remote control is wireless. It doesn't have, you know, it's using wireless technologies. There's no infrared there. So you'll see that it does actually <laughs> focus. It uh, doesn't have a window there, and it, it's working probably the same way as your sort of garage door opener. Yes, I'm going to enable parental controls to stop my kids buying stuff. And uh, I'm going to enter a top secret pin too secret for you <laughs> we're done <laughs> so yeah that's quite cool how you can enter the pin just using the sort of spinny thing while we finish setting up your device let's take a quick tour of your new fire tv stick now you can watch your favourite shows and movies just by talking to your Alexa voice. While it's remote. doing its talking, it's a good time to, uh, you know, throw away all the junk. We certainly aren't going to need any of this stuff. Skip ahead two minutes. Or catch on your favourite show. Find Bosch. I can't escape. I can't escape it. Just use the outer ring to navigate. So we couldn't skip that. However, not a problem. We're here now. And uh, this looks kind of familiar. I guess it looks a bit like the uh, app. If you ever run the uh, app on your sort of Wii, and I'm guessing if you have one of the Amazon devices, it's going to be pretty similar to that. But the first thing I want to do. I don't only want to sort of um, modify the parental control so that my kids, I don't mind them pretty much, I'm going to say watching what they want. I don't think they're that interested in finding adult material, for example, because they have the um, kids section on Netflix, what they watch. But I don't want them to buy anything. So we'll have that on. We'll have that on. Viewing restrictions. Teen and mature. Okay, we'll leave them on. Well, we'll leave the viewing restrictions off, actually. Pin protect app launches. Nah, not really that bothered. Pin protect prime photos app. Not bothered about that, too. So that's that's all we want, really. And um, let's see what we can do. So I'm going to push the button here, and you're going to hear me talking. When I talk, that's what I'm going to say. So YouTube. Ooh, seems to be working. And if you see in the top left corner, it does say YouTube, indeed, and it's sort of found this thing. Strange it's blue. I don't know how Amazon managed to get a blue YouTube icon. They must have done a deal with Google. And we can download that. Now, the interesting thing is I don't think YouTube works 
natively. I don't think there is a native app on this platform, but let's see what it does. It's installing, we open it. And it's so nice to be able to just click this anywhere and it works, so you don't have to do the pointing at the screen. So it's inviting us to use a web browser, so you've got a choice between Firefox or Silk, and I don't know what Silk is, but I'm going to go with Firefox because we're used to that. So I'm guessing it's running it as a sort of a wrapper, so you've got to install Firefox separately. That's what it's doing now. Just adjust the camera there. Downloading. And it's pretty quick. I mean, considering we're on a kind of a restricted, speed-restricted hotel Wi-Fi, it's not bad at all. Um, in, the, in hotels, you can often pay, you see, for extra extra fast Wi-Fi, and I'm not paying for that. Um, but it's definitely adequate. And you could see from... I was going to say you could see from the video how quickly it was playing when it started, but that's probably on the device. It's probably not streaming that part. So now it's installing Firefox. I'm not sure. It'd be a bit tedious using the old Firefox without a keyboard, but let's see. So because it's showing you the Firefox main screen, it's got its own kind of apps, hasn't it? But what's interesting here, I'm noticing this edge is actually cut off. So I don't know if that's because this TV is of a particular resolution or if just it's not quite a perfect experience. And there's YouTube, and it looks pretty much like the smart TV versions of YouTube, and you can uh, sign in, and then you've got to use the dreaded activation code, which I will do. Got my laptop here anyway. So you can hear me tapping away, so I'm going to do the... Uh, www.youtube.com front slash activate I'm going to put in the code I'm going to hit return, 3, 2, 1, go let's see how quickly that works and then I'm going to choose my appropriate account there, it says it's done Let's see. Oh, and there you go. It is done. That wasn't too long, was it? Quite quick for a sort of push request. And there you go. That's it. And I can watch a bit of the 8-bit guy if I want. In fact, let's just try that real quick and see how that looks. It's taking its time because it's loading it up in a web browser. And there you go. Great success, great success. I'm super happy about that. That's going to really cheer me up. So what I'm going to do now for the rest of the evening is probably um, spend a bit of time going through all of these apps and sort of installing all of my um, things. But I have noticed, just looking at the screen now, it's actually got, because of my Amazon account, it's already put my, um, or my, I was going to say love film, but all, Amazon Prime video, what they call it now, and I suspect, I'm really hoping, aud in fact, let's try this. Alexa, play Audible. Getting your book from Audible, resuming snow crash. There's 42 minutes left in the chapter, Ooh. and 6 hours 53 minutes left in the book. 6 hours left. The computer keeps a copy of everything. And there you go. Look. If you get sick or something, it's all there. Where your co-workers and supervisors can... <laughs> now, how do you stop, pause it? Because the remote control doesn't have, like, pause, stop. Oh, it does actually have pause. Oh, there we go. Done. Brilliant. So yeah, I think that's uh, quite a convincing experience. I haven't tried the, the Roku, Roku things. And apparently you can get the app. If you did read that on the screen, you can get the app to control this. I was a bit worried because I'm quite used to using the mobile phone for controlling a Chromecast, but that seems to work. So I'm going to be happy. hope that's been of some use to you. Please like, share, subscribe. And as ever, thank you for watching.